Welcome to Mishnah study. Masechet Pesachim Perek Tet Mishnah Chayto. Here in this Mishnah, we're going to discuss a Korban Pesach that got mixed up with other Korbanot. How do you treat all these animals now? Right? So the way Arambam actually sets this up, and it's different than other Mifarshim, he says, let's say you had a Korban Pesach that got mixed up with two other Olot. Right? So one Korban Pesach with two Korban um, Ola. Korbanot Ola. Right? Other Mifarshim explain it that you have, you know, one with an Ola and another Asham. Right, and that's why you know some other mafashim had trouble understanding Hanabam over here. But we're going to explain based on Hanabam and how I think it simply makes sense. So Hapesach shunit argu bizvachim korban Pesach they mix it in with other korbanot. Right, what Hanabam says is two, let's say two other olat olot yiru an shistavu. Right, they graze until they get a mum. Right, until they get a blemish. Vimachru they're sold biavi bidme hayafesh bahen miminze u bidme hayafesh bahen miminze biavsida more time in beto. Right. Let's say you had three animals. Right. One was worth, um, uh, you know, uh, one of them was worth a. I'm using Hanan Bam's, uh, you know, calculations over here. Let's say one was worth a uh, hundred dollars. The second one was worth one fifty, and the third animal was worth uh, two hundred. Now they all got mixed up. Now you don't know which one's the Quran Pesach and which one is the uh, other Olot. So what do you do? You sell them all. How much do you get? Four hundred and fifty. Right. One fifty plus one hundred plus one fifty plus two hundred. Right. So you have a total of. 450. So you sell it, you get $450. And now you have to bring three korbanot. So you're going to bring, bring two animals, right? A korban pesach and a korban ola at 200 each, right? Because we need to cover, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe the maybe the korban pesach was the most expensive one. Maybe the ola was the most expensive one. So 200 each. And then you bring another, a third animal for 150, right? The korban ola, the second korban ola should be with 150, right? Because we know. Right? And other Mephashim has to one. You have to bring the third one at $200 also. No, because we know there were two Korban Ola. One of them was $200. It, it, the max, the most it could be is one, it could be $200. And the second one, you know, the max it could be is $150. Right? So that's what he brings a $200 a Korban Pesach, a $200 Korban Ola, and a $150 Korban Ola. That comes to, up to a total of $550. So the balance, right, $550 minus $450, the balance, $100, comes out of his own pocket. And that's what it, what it means. We have Sida Mortar in Beto. He loses the balance from his own pocket. That's it. That's the case that we're talking about. Next case, right, Let's say the Quran Pesach got mixed in with Bechorot, right? Uh, you know, a, a Bechor animal that's eaten by the Kohanim. Kohanim could eat it. A regular people can't eat it. But there's another difference between a Quran Pesach and a, and, a, and a Bechor. And that's not just who's allowed to eat it, but it's also how long you're allowed to eat it for. We know a Quran Pesach, you're only allowed to eat it until Hatzot of that night. And a Bechor is Kadashim Kalim that you're allowed to eat for two days and one night. So Rabbi Shimon Om says, Im, Romer, Im kwanim, Let's say, Rabbi Shimon says, look, let's say the group that we're talking about whose Bechor got mixed up with the Korban Pesach Rabbi Shimon says, you know what? Take that, you know, Bechor, and uh, bring it as a Korban Pesach. That's fine. And it's Kohanim. Kohanim are allowed to eat a Bechor. So they'll go ahead and they'll eat this animal. Achamim have a different problem. Achamim say, no. What's the issue over here? Even if a Kohen eats it, they're only allowed to eat it until when? So a Korban Pesach, you're only allowed to eat until Hatzot. After Hatzot, it becomes Notar. You have to burn it. So what happens over here? If you bring a Bechor as a Quran Pesach, you're causing a Bechor to potentially be brought to Beta Pesul. You're causing the Bechor to potentially be, have to be burnt earlier than it would necessarily have to be burnt. You only, because now you, you're making it a Quran Pesach, so now you only have to eat it till 12. Let's say you don't finish, you know, finish everything till 12 o'clock, you have to burn it. But a Bechor, usually you have extra time. So we're causing a Bechor animal to be burnt earlier than it would have to usually have to be burnt. And that would that's what it means to bring Kodashim the Beta Pesul and Hamim say, and Mevi'im Kodashim the Beta Pesul, you're not allowed to go, go ahead and do so. And therefore, they would say, like a regular case, you have to go ahead and sell them and bring the value you know, of each one, buy a new animal and bring it as a Korban Pesach, and the rest is the uh, bring and the rest would be the, the Bechor. Um uh, Rabbi Shimon though allows you to bring Korban to Beta Pesu, right? Rabbi Shimon's uh, um his shita is maybe imita kodashim the beta pesu, and that's why he says that if it's a group of kwanim, you're allowed to go ahead and eat it, but Halakha is not like Rabbi Shimon.